Okay, in today's commute, we're actually going to talk about batteries essential and stuff like that because there's some misinformation going around stuff like that about what batteries to actually choose and so forth because people got the assumption that you know the higher voltage battery pack that you go with the more current it's going to draw meaning that you could get less range and less capacity and stuff like that it's actually quite the opposite i don't know where that one came from but pretty much the higher the voltage the less actual amperage you draw which meaning you're gonna get a lot more range and stuff like that so let's say you're going with a 52 volt battery to a 72 volt battery you're pretty much almost gonna get a dirt of the current um that you're gonna draw less and you're actually gonna get more range out of it. now same thing we're going from 18650s to 2100 because the reason why i stress a lot even with lower power batteries like 48 volt 52 volt batteries just to go 21700s nowadays is because for example samson 35e you only get 3500 milliamp hours a cell and if you're doing in a 5p that's 17 and a half amp hours right well if you take a samson 50e it's 5,000 milliamps per cell and if you do that same configuration 5p you're actually getting 25 amp hour capacity and stuff like that even at the same voltage 52 volts and stuff like that so actually going with uh you know 21700s alone and stuff like that is gonna give you actually somewhat of a performance increase and a capacity increase just by that itself now you're not gonna get no top end range like top speed and stuff like that because you have to go higher voltage to get you know higher top speed that's just how it works is then you get more rpm out of the motor the higher voltage you go and so forth but what you will get is you will get more torque and stuff like that. And you'll get more torque if the controller, of course, is up to par to actually give you more torque. And you can tune it that way because you're going to get a lot less voltage sag. And you're also going to stay at a higher voltage longer than you would, let's just say, in 18650. Because you're not going to get as much voltage sag. And also you're getting a little more capacity. So therefore as a battery drops down your speed decreases if you haven't noticed anyone that's ridden on an e-bike as your battery dies down you can't go as high speed as you did if you just fully charge your battery and that's normal as because the voltage drops off after a while and stuff like that and if voltage sag becomes a problem where you're getting a lot of voltage sag because you're pushing the cell at its max you know your speed's also gonna drop off too as well and stuff like that so that's one of the things and one of the reasons why i stress that you know nowadays just make sure when you're buying a bike that they're actually using 21700s pretty much people are kind of moving away towards the 18650s and they went to 21700s and so forth and that's the way to go because you just get overall more capacity so instead of just getting you know for example 17 and a half amp hour pack let's just say if you're going 35 e's and going to 50 e's when you go 50 e's you're getting 25 amp hours now in most cases most people go 4p in that configuration and even if you go 4p setup you still get 20 amp hours which is two and a half more amp hours that you would get than if you just went with 18 um 650s and stuff like that and that's why i stress you know get the best battery you could get because you get more efficiency and more performance out of it the bigger battery goes even with voltage and stuff like that it actually makes a huge difference in the performance and stuff like that and that's why i stress that a lot so now the reason why most manufacturers don't go 16 72 volt is because legality reasons stuff like that because obviously e-bikes you're only supposed to be able to go 750 watts and no more than 28 miles per hour to stay within the legal limits of most states and stuff like that so you know that's why you see a bunch of for example especially the cheaper e-bikes they're only 750 watts and they do gear hub motors and we're gonna talk about that gear hub motors are actually the best bang for the buck as far as you know lower power bikes because you know they're using planetary gears and stuff like that so therefore 
you're not relying on a direct drive mode and how much torque you're going you actually got gear reduction and everything else going on where you can actually get you know a little more low-end torque and stuff like that out of a gear hub motor versus like a direct drive or a direct drive you just got the stator and so forth that's directly connected to the actual you know shaft itself and stuff like that and you're only relying just on that alone so in most cases that's why direct drives you just don't get as much torque because you don't have that gear ratio and stuff like that where you can actually get more torque out of it where you got like on a gear hub motor way it's made is you got a small shaft where you got the motor and stuff like that and that small shaft turns three bigger planetary gears and those three bigger planetary gears besides being connected to a clutch is actually connected to the outer case of the motor and that's effectively what torn your reel because now you're going from a smaller gear to a large gear effectively giving you more torque essentially and stuff like that and that's why on lower power bikes you always see gear hub motors okay. so that's one of the things to actually you know pretty much watch out for anything usually under 1200 watts it's probably gonna be a gear hub and when you start going into the 15 and upper range that's when you start going into direct drive motors and stuff like that as far as hub motor bikes go and that's actually pretty good you know that's what you would kind of expect you know for a bike like that you know what i mean if you want to get the most performance the most bang for your bunk essentially and stuff like that is to actually effectively get that now with um mid drive motors it kind of works different you know what i mean mid drive motors obviously you got the motor where your cranks are and stuff like that and i kind of discussed this in you know the different type of motors and stuff like that where you actually on a mid drive instead of having on your back wheel you got it in the middle where your cranks where you're actually pedaling and stuff like that and the advantages of that is is that for, you get pretty much essentially you can use your bike drive train besides the internal gears that's actually in the mid drive motor to actually help you give you that larger gear and then you get of course more torque out and that's why uh, mid drive motors are pretty much torque monsters because you could actually go and switch to a lower gear if you want top speed or you could switch to a larger gear to get more torque out of it from hill climbing abilities and stuff like that and that's why they're great especially for off-roading and stuff like that and the other reason too if you're doing a lot of off-roading jumping and stuff like that you don't got to worry about you know for example you don't have to worry about you know unsprung weight pretty much where you got your weight in the back wheel and stuff like that therefore you could get better center of gravity and stuff like that and they just typically tend to perform better in that regard and stuff like that especially let's just say if you lose power and stuff like that where i pedal all bikes i pedal direct drive i pedal gear hub and i also pedaled you know mid drive and stuff like that mid drive by far feels like a regular bike when you're going ahead pedaling obviously you gotta consider the weight of your, the bike and so forth the heavier the bike is you know the more harder it obviously is gonna be to pedal and stuff like that but with you know when you're pedaling for example a heavy direct drive or a gear hub you feel that weight on that back wheel as you're pedaling and stuff like that and when you're pedaling you can feel the weight difference on and stuff like that it's gonna wear you out a lot quickly that's why in most cases i don't usually recommend if you're like a cyclist and stuff like that and you're playing on pedaling a lot just to go with a mid drive essentially that got torque sensing and all that because when you do that you know what i mean you're gonna be able to if you lose power you can pedal that thing four or five miles home if it's a 60 pound let's say bike and so forth for no problem where if you go ahead and try to do the same thing with a you know rear direct drive stuff yeah you can pedal 
it's gonna be hard though especially if you are out in a single gear bike where you got no derailleur and stuff like that where you can switch to an easier gear for example if you're going uphill or you can switch to a faster gear when you're actually on flat ground and stuff like that that helps a lot and that's why i stress that out. not to say no i get why people like belt drives because they're low maintenance they look nice and stuff same reason why i actually like them to be honest with you and stuff like that but when it comes to you though know, where you got a hub motor and stuff like that i rather just keep the chain and the derailleur versus a belt drive belt drives are more made for like mid drives and stuff like that where you can use an internal geared hub and that way you can actually go ahead and shift your gears through that internal gear hub and stuff like that, which is not a motor it actually is a form of derailleur that goes into a hub that goes into your reel and you can use that to your shifting and then it's all sealed and then you got the low maintenance aspect and also the cool look of it so this concludes this video and hopefully it's informational.